All right, so this time, uh, last time we talked about how you drew structures, how you put things together to make molecules. Uh, this time we're going to talk about the shapes that molecules have. And uh, this is important be, uh, for the same reason that, you know, when you build a house, your house is going to look like this. When you build a school, it's going to look like something like this, right? That you have, there's your entrance, right? And your gymnasium is back over here. They're different because they have different functions. The structures of atoms are different. And if you know what they're different... Uh, structures mean, then you can start anticipating what they're going to do. Are they going to smell good? Are they going to help cure cancer? Are they going to be a viable source of energy? Um, so uh, we need to know what atoms look like. We're going to look at um, five different shapes and three different bond angles here that you'll need to know. So those shapes are linear, trigonal planar, and I guess I should do this. Uh, if it's linear, it is 180 degrees, okay, from math. Trigonal planar will be 120 degrees. Um, tetrahedral, um, trigonal pyramidal, and bent all have the same va uh, basic structure, but they have um, different amount of lone pairs. So all of them are going to be 109.5 degrees. All right. So this is so this is what we're looking for by the end, knowing how to identify these different shapes, um, and uh, knowing these are their bond angles. Uh, the reason that this works is a thing called the Vesper. Okay, which stands for valence shell, which we uh, know what that is. Electron pair, be a bonding pair or lone pair, repulsion. Repulsion. All right, um, so my outermost electrons that are bonding things together are going to repel each other. Right, so if I have something like H bonded to H, well, here I don't have anything to repel against. This is, this is the only place where I have electrons, but the only thing that I can possibly do here is linear. All right, if I have Be, which is going to bond twice, it has two valence electrons that it has to uh, give up. Well, if I draw it like this, then I have that 180 degree. These, these electrons here and here are as far, as far away from each other as they possibly can be. If I drew it like this, they aren't. Okay? And they are going to repel each other. So if it tries to go like this, it's just going to snap back over into this. So this would be the correct way of drawing this and it, with the 180 degrees. If I have boron, which has three valence electrons, it's going to look something like this. But here I have this 180 degrees. Here I only have 90 degrees, so I haven't maximized the distance between them, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these as far apart from each other as I possibly can. So a better way of drawing this, and the correct way to draw this, is actually with a Y kind of shape, which expands this to 120 degrees all the way around. And uh, so then we go, we keep continue going, we go to hydrogen or carbon or anything like carbon where I have four bonds now. Well, now it looks like this is going to be perfect, that we have the 90 degrees all the way around and that everybody is, um, is happy here. But we have to account that molecules are 3D in linear and in trigonal planar. Um, which this one was. Sorry, I forgot to write that on there. Uh, it didn't matter. Uh, they, they are flat molecules. That's the most uh, spread out that they can get. Here, if we, and this is a little bit hard to see, but if we take and we keep these two in the same plane and we push this one down a little bit. Let me switch colors here. So I'm going to keep this hydrogen straight up and push this hydrogen down a little bit. Well, that's going to shift this hydrogen over and out towards me. I'm not sure, you know, here's a 
wedge kind of thing. It's coming out towards me. Okay, so we're going to go and put that hydrogen there. Well, that's going to push this atom backwards into the page. All right, so let's look at this a little bit less messy. All right, so here we go. Um, so you can see this, oops, sorry, this to this, okay, that is straight up and down. This is flat to me. This one is going back into the page. So this is flipped from what I did. And this one is coming out towards us. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, so when we draw a molecule like this, the way that um, they have uh, drawn them is you would go C, flat H, flat H, an H coming out. And it doesn't have to be H. This can be any atom in the world, as long as it has a tetrahedral arrangement. And this arrangement is going to give us 109.5 degrees between all of my atoms. All right, so this is a tetrahedral arrangement. And as I said at the beginning, uh, the next couple ones, they all have this basic tetrahedral arrangement, but we're going to start replacing things with lone pairs. So uh, with my ammonia, um, I'm going to have that tetrahedral arrangement. Ammonia is NH3. Right, so this atom is flat towards us. The lone pair is flat towards us. Uh, this hydrogen is coming out towards us. This hydrogen is going back away. So it's still going to have that 109. Uh, it's actually going to be a little bit less because a lone pair takes up a little bit. This will take up a little bit more room than a bonded pair would. Um, but we're just going to go with 109.5 so that we don't have to memorize all these random different numbers. Um, and we're, because it has that lone pair, instead of calling it tetrahedral, we're going to call this trigonal pyramidal. Because it makes a pyramid. A three, here's my, right, I have my, my base. It's my base here, and it all goes up into the point which is my nitrogen. So I make this little pyramid there. And then if I have two lone pairs, like in water, so I have my oxygen, my lone pair, my lone pair, both of those in the plane, one hydrogen coming out, one hydrogen going back. Or I could say oxygen with a hydrogen, with a hydrogen both in the plane, and my lone pair coming out, and my lone pair going back. Okay, it doesn't matter where I do it. But the point is, hydrogen is ne our water is never like this. Okay, water is not linear. No. Okay, it is not linear. Linear. It is. It's called bent, and it too is going to have that 109.5. A little bit less, but one. You know, we're just going to go with the 109.5 degree angle between these two hydrogens. Okay, and that's going to come into play later on when we talk about hydrogen bonding and things like that. Um, so it is very, very important that you realize that water is not linear. All right? And that's our basic shapes. Um, one other thing I want to emphasize here is when you are doing this, you are not worried as much about the number of bonds as the placement of the bonds. So here I have one, two, three, four different bonds on this carbon but one and two are in the same place. They're bonding to the same atom. So this guy only has three bonds. So he is trigonal planar. Okay, shape-wise. He has three bonds shape-wise. Um, and so this will be a flat molecule. Eth ethylene will be a flat molecule. All right, we'll talk to you next time.